We're going to add text and an image to this person who's skating. As you can see, there are trees blocking the person in some parts. This example will be great for learning how to perform motion tracking, even when there are obstacles passing in front, which is very common. Once we've placed our video on the timeline, we need to place the playhead directly over the video clip and then go to the Fusion module of DaVinci Resolve. Don't worry, even though we're using Fusion, the whole process is very simple. The first thing we need to do is go to the Effects menu, located at the top left, and search for the Tracker effect. Here it is. Select the Tracker effect and drag it onto the yellow line to connect the effect correctly. But if you want to add effects more easily, I recommend using the keyboard shortcut Shift Space. When you press the keyboard shortcut, the tool searcher will appear. Here, we need to search for the tracker effect and click on Add. This way, it will automatically connect the effect. Once the tracker effect is added, let's start tracking the person's movement. If we select the Tracker 1 node, we can see red rectangles appearing in our viewer. These rectangles are the tracking areas. To move these rectangles and place them over the area we want to track, we need to click on the top left corner of the rectangle on this small square. In my case, I'm going to track the movement of the person's face. To position the tracking area well, you can zoom in on the viewer by holding down the control key and scrolling the mouse wheel. And now, to adjust the position of the viewer, hold down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. This way, we can place the tracking area more accurately. Perfect! I'm going to find a frame of the video where the face is clearly visible. We can see that there are two red rectangles, a small rectangle and a larger one with intermittent lines. This larger rectangle will also track the movement, but with less intensity. It's a secondary area. We use the small rectangle to select the area we want to track, and the large rectangle with intermittent lines to select a wider area. Ready. Let's go to the menu of the Tracker node. If it doesn't appear, click on the Inspector tab. Before starting the tracking, it's advisable to change the Adaptive mode. By default, it's set to None. I recommend changing it to best match, as this mode usually gives better results. Now that we have everything set up, let's start tracking the movement of the face. Since we've positioned ourselves on frame 35, we need to track the movement to the right until the last frame of the video, and also to the left to the beginning of the video. First, we'll track to the right side. To do this, click on this button with an arrow pointing to the right, and DaVinci Resolve will track the movement of the face in that entire section. Perfect! The frames with these white vertical lines are the frames where tracking has been completed. Next, we position ourselves again on the same frame where we were before, which in my case was frame 35. Now, we need to track the left side. Click on this button with the arrow pointing to the left. Here, we encounter the first problem. Since there's a tree passing in front of the woman and her face isn't visible, the tracker couldn't follow her correctly. If you notice, when the tree covers the face, the tracker gets stuck on the tree. How can we fix this? It's very easy. Just follow these steps I'm going to tell you next. The first step is to find the frame where the tracker stops following the face. In this case, it's very simple. We just need to find the frame before the tree covers the face. Once we are located on the frame where the error occurs, the second step is to go to the Spline menu. Click here to activate the Spline menu. This menu will appear at the bottom right. Next, we need to check the box for Tracked Center 1. By activating it, we'll see this line with some lock icons. This line represents the motion tracking we've done. We need to clearly see the left side where our playhead is located, which is the part we're interested in. Let's zoom in a bit to see it clearly. 
This left part is where the tracker gets stuck on the tree and stops following the person. So let's remove all these locks from the left. This way we can eliminate the part with the error. Select all the locks on the left and press the delete key to remove them. Perfect. Finally, we'll look for the frame where the woman's face reappears. To navigate frame by frame, we can press the left arrow key on the keyboard. Let's move to the left. And here's where the face reappears. Great. Now let's properly place the tracking area. Click on this small square in the corner and place it back over the face. And then continue with the tracking. By avoiding the problematic frames of the video, we can obtain correct motion tracking. We can see that now the tracker follows the movement correctly when the person moves behind the tree. Perfect! Now I'll show you how to solve another very common problem you might encounter. When the element we're tracking goes out of frame, the tracker will get stuck on the edge. This is something we need to fix, as when we add text or an image, it will also end up floating on the edge. It's very easy to fix. Just like in the previous error, the first step is to find the last frame before the tracker fails. Okay, frame 164. This is the frame where the tracker gets stuck on the edge of the frame. Next, we open the spline menu and check the box Tracked Center 1. If you don't see the locks, don't worry. You may have the graph mispositioned. Click on this icon to adjust the graph and see the entire line with the locks. Now, let's zoom in on the end of the video to remove the part where the tracker has failed. Okay, now we simply delete all the locks from frame 164 onwards. Press the delete key. Now, to finish solving the problem and prevent the text from floating on the edge, we need to take one last step. We right-click on the graph and look for the option Gradient Extrapolation. Clicking on it will create an estimation of the tracker's movement, meaning the tracker will imagine the path the drone would follow off-screen. And there you go. Now that we know how to solve the two most common problems, let's move on to the final part of the tutorial, adding text or an image to the motion tracking we've done. Once we've finished tracking, we need to go to the Operation tab. In this menu, we need to change the Operation mode. To add images or text, we need to select the Match Move mode. Perfect! Next, we'll add a Multi-Merge node to be able to add our text or image. Click on this icon here. The Multi-Merge node will allow us to add two elements that follow the tracking, meaning if you want, you can add two texts or a text along with an image. If you only want to add one element, you can do that too, no problem. Next, we connect the multi-merge node with the tracker node like this, so that it's connected with this small green triangle. Perfect, it's time to add our text. Click on this icon to add a text node. And we connect the text plus node with the multi-merge node like this. There we go. In the text plus menu, we type the text we want and customize it to our liking. We can change the font, color, size, and other settings. To place the text over the person, Click on this small square between the two arrows, and then move the text to where you want to place it. And that's it! Now the text we just added will follow the movement of the head throughout the video. You might be thinking, how can I add two texts? It's very simple. We just add another text and connect it to the multi-merge node exactly as we did before. We write and customize the text, and place it in the area of the video we want. And this new text we just added will also follow the same movement. What about images? How can we add them? First, we go to the Media Pool panel. Here, you can import the files you want to use. Once imported, select the image, GIF, or video you want 
and drag it to the node panel. Connect the node with the image to the multi-merge node. Now, if we play the video, we will see that the image follows the movement, but we would still need to modify the position or the size of the image to properly integrate it with the video. For this, we will add a new node. Make sure the node with the image is selected and press the keyboard shortcut Shift Space to open the tool finder. We look for the Transform tool and click on Add. And in the menu of the Transform node, you will have the freedom to adjust the position, scale, and rotation until your image fits perfectly in the scene. Wait, what do you say? Would you like to learn how to do more effects in DaVinci Resolve completely free? It just so happens that I have a free DaVinci Resolve course that you can watch in full on my YouTube channel. You just have to click on the playlist that appears on the screen.